Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. and Yetta started along the road to independence <laughs> via Papa's checkbook, Pa now has to figure out a way to keep from going crazy with both Sidney and Harold firmly ensconced as members of the firm in the knee pants factory. Back from her honeymoon, Yetta is visiting with Mama. Now you should tell me, Yetta, where did you go on your honeymoon? Oh, we went up to Lake Placid. Lake Placid? Mm. Papa's Lake Placid, Yetta? A summer resort. And a winter resort, too. Oh. So it's spring and you go to a summer and winter resort. You tell me about his a resort? Oh, just a place to do all sorts of things. Fish and hike, dance and go boating. Hmm. So to go boating, you have to go on a honeymoon. <laughs> Your papa took me boating at Coney Island, and it didn't cost all that money. Twenty cents an hour for the boat. We took it for two hours because the second hour was only 15 cents. Tell me, what else did you do? Well, we couldn't stay very long because Harold had to get back to the business. Ah, uh, yeah, to the business. Um, uh, yet, uh... Hmm? Yeah, but there's something I want to tell you because uh, Pop is not home. Uh, he's very aggravated. So tell Harold to be careful with the Nippens factory, huh? Harold's a good businessman, Ma. He's young and he has good ideas. Yeah, but that you'll have to prove to your Papa. Well, Sidney turned out all right, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, the, the longer you live, the more you learn. That's why it takes so long to live, because we learn more. I don't know what you mean, Ma. Darling, one of the things you'll find out, that what's good once, Maybe the second time won't be so good. It's like the man who takes a walk. On the first day, the sun is shining, so the man likes the walk. But the second day, he takes a walk again, but this time it's raining. Oh, Ma, what do you mean? Well, the man walks on the same street. The house is the same. The street is the same. The man is the same. But the weather is different. So the man don't like the walk the second day. Oh, you mean Harold might not be another Sydney? I mean Harold might not be a round peg in a round hole. Oh, but, Ma, I'm sure he'll be all right. Well, he has all sorts of wonderful ideas. Sure, sure he has. <laughs> Young people always have wonderful ideas. Ma. Hmm. Don't you like Harold? Who says I don't? Oh, you just talk like it. Yes, I'm talking like a mother. I'm telling you things because I want to be a shock absorbent. Absorber, Ma. One or the other, yet I'm being it. Like all mothers, I'm telling you things now so that later maybe you'll remember and you'll be ready for it. Oh, I see. But I'm sure Harold will be just as valuable as Sidney. He may even sell more uniforms than Sidney. Yet your papa's in the knee pants business. One Sidney selling uniforms is enough. I know, Papa. Well, then Harold will sell knee pants. And if he can't, then Mr. Fink wants him to go into business with him. Mr. Fink? Huh. We can give our son-in-law a job. Well, then you'll talk it over with Pa? Yes, sir. Your papa's a good businessman. For 20 years, he's in business. I don't run it. He does. But you can talk with him. Sure, sure. Now, you shouldn't worry yet, uh huh? Well, I, I was just a little doubtful about the way things might work out. Uh huh, that's another thing, yet. To yourself, you should think about things. You should worry about them. But to other people, you should always be smiling. And then they'll say, hm, she don't worry, why should I worry? <laughs> it's like the old maximum laugh, and everybody laughs too. <laughs> oh, you're such a comfort, Ma. Why shouldn't I be? I'm your mother. <laughs> um, there's Harold now. Well, he went to the factory this morning with Sydney. Sidney said he was going to show him the ropes. Ropes? 
He's got something new from Sydney. Are we going to make ropes? Oh, that means he's going to show him around, Ma. Get him acquainted with everything. Yeah, maybe it's better that for the first few days he keeps out of Papa's way. Oh, Harold's smart. He'll learn quickly. Well, I think that he's going to... Who's that? It can't be Papa. It's only half past three. Oh, it is Papa. Ah, uh, yeah? Then maybe you better be quiet while I talk, huh? When Papa comes home early in the afternoon, there'll be two things wrong. He's sick or he's aggravated. He had breakfast at home, so he ain't sick. Hello, Mama. Hello, Papa. Oh, hello, Heather. Hello, Pa. Jake, how are you? I'm fine. Everything is fine, but I am crazy. Jake, you shouldn't repeat that. Well, I I guess I'll be going. I I have some things to do downtown. Yeah, Yetta, you go along. Huh? Later, I'll come to see you. All right, Ma. Bye, Pa. Goodbye, Yetta. Goodbye, Yetta. Um, so, Jake, um, you're sick? Sick? No, Mama. I'm not sick down here. But up here in my head, I'm, I'm twisting like a top. Dizzy spells, maybe? No. Son-in-law spells. <laughs> Jack, you're talking around the band. What's the matter? Mama, for 20 years and more, I've been making knee pants. You know that. Who should know better than me, Jack? Sam and me, we started the business. We were alone in it. We went along for years until Sydney came. Even then, I said to myself, business is pretty good for 20 years. We had our ups and our downs. But then Harold comes along, and now we have sideways with the ups and downs. Oh. Mama, you should say, oi, not all. Oh. Uh, what's the matter with Harold? Sydney is giving him a new office. Well, if Harold works at the factory, Jake, he should have an office. If he would sit outside, maybe people would talk. Maybe they'd say, poor Jake Bloom, business is bad. The people who work for him sit on the doorstep. Mama, that's nonsense. But listen, for over 20 years, I've worked at the knee pants factory with a desk and a pencil, maybe a few sheets of paper. I figure prices and I get along with my trade. I am fair. Everybody knows that. And I never needed more than a desk and a pencil, maybe a few sheets of paper. <laughs> Papa, you're talking, but you're not saying anything. What's the matter? Sam and me, Mama, we go along for years. Then Sidney and Harold come along and they have to have offices that look like movie houses. Like the arcade yet, the corner? Bigger, like the Radio City Music Hall. Mm -hmm. Red leather on the chairs, lights that don't light where you press them, but someplace else. And Sidney, Mama, Sidney has to have a buzzer. You have a buzzer? Jake, what's a buzzer? A bell that goes like a bee. Oh. Papa, maybe you should sleep for a while. I could sleep. <laughs> All right. Tell me, why does Sidney use this buzzer? Why? To call the stenographer. Has he got a cold that he can't call? He's got ideas that he can't call. So what about Harold? Harold is having an office like Sydney's. Sam and me, we've got to sit in one office like we've been for 20 years. But those two schlamils... Hmm, like Big Bang. Like Big Shots. Uh-huh. Well, maybe you're right. Mama, are you sick? Why should I be sick? Because you're saying that maybe I'm right. I said maybe. But you never said that before. Well, I was thinking that you're right about too many cooks spoiling the new pants factory. Maybe one of them should go. Uh -huh. Now you're talking sense. Yeah, Sydney could go. Now, Mama, Sydney's running the uniform department of the factory. Sam and me, we don't know anything about uniforms. Mm. Then maybe Harold should go. Before his new office is finished. Why not? I'll call Mrs. Fink right away and tell her. Why do you want to call Mrs. Fink? To tell her that Harold will take the other job. What other job? The one Monroe Fink's going to give him. Who said that Monroe Fink is going to give Harold a job? Monroe Fink. So, Mo Fink is trying to steal my employees. A lot of nerve he's got. Well, Jack, you got more employees than you need. My business is big enough so that I can keep men working. I don't need Mo Fink to take them away from me. Well, so maybe Harold would be happier working for his father. Who says he's not happy where he is? Well, Jack, you're not happy. I haven't been happy for 20 years. Why should I start now, Mama? I like to worry about the business. It's when I don't worry about it that I know it's bad. I can't think of Mrs. Fink's number. Can you, Jack? Don't change the subject, Mama, and don't call Mrs. Fink. Yeah, but darling, Yet and Harold have to eat. And how can Yetta run a house with no money? I am paying Harold a good salary. Did they have to eat like kings and queens? But you said you don't want Harold around. I said I don't want him to have a big office like a movie palace. Harold is a good boy. With a little experience in the knee pants business, he will be a good man. Now don't call Mrs. Fink. All right, Jake, I won't call Mrs. Fink. Maybe I could find something for Harold to do. Something like keeping the books. Yeah. There he would learn the prices, the stock, and the market. Learn from the bottom up, Mama, like Sam and me. Yeah. And they will need maybe a few pencils and some paper. Uh -huh, that's good, Jake, that's good. Sure, sure, it's good. I'll go back to the office and tell Sam. Mm, will he be happy when I tell him that Harold won't have a big office and lots of red furniture? Yeah. <laughs> little by little, Harold will work his way up in the business. <laughs> uh, now you're happy again, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> I am always happy. One big shot and the business is enough. Yeah, one like Sydney. Yeah, it'll be happy. She will be proud of Harold. She will be able to say that Harold worked his way up in the firm. That he started from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, Papa, the doorbell. Yeah? Oh, uh, I'll answer it, Becky. It might be Mrs. Fink. So, if it's Mrs. Fink, I got my shoes on. Oh, hello. I thought I'd find you home, Ma. What is wrong with the factory, Sydney? Why did you come here? Hello, Ma. Hello, Sydney. Is Sally here? No. Should she be? No. Oh, before I go crazy, why are you here? Did something happen at the factory? Is there something wrong? Please no, tell me. No, nothing at all. There were just a few things I wanted to talk over with you before we went ahead with them. What things? 
What are we doing now that maybe I should know about? Or maybe I shouldn't. Well, Harold and I tried to find you, but Sam said you'd gone. Yeah, to get some rest. I suppose now that you have opened a branch of the Nippens factory. Oh, nothing like that, Pa. I just wanted to ask you what your title was around the factory. Title? Title? Yeah, Papa, you know what a title is. It's a, it's a name. Ain't that right, Sidney? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Ma. Oh, I see. You leave the factory to come here to ask me what my name is. Well, my name is Jacob Bloom. Your name is Sidney Shipman. You married my daughter, Sarah. You remember now? You, you remember? I don't understand, Pa. You see, you and Sam own the factory. Ah, thanks for giving it back to us. Now, wait, Pa. I want to explain. I am waiting. I am waiting with my head and my hands for what is coming next. You're the president of the factory. I am not the president. I was never elected. I started the business with Sam. There was never an election. But, Pa, we're branching out. We're growing bigger all the time. Nowadays, people judge things by the front put up. Now, sometimes it's like Papa's vest to his dress suit. No back at all. Ah, Mama, you have said something there. But we've got the back and no front. Take the case of those uniforms I sold to the South American Republic. They were colorful, shiny buttons and all. Do you think the representative of that country would have bought them if they'd been gray or dark colored? He's right, sir. He's getting around to something. Go on, Sidney. Well... We're going to expand. We're going to do business on a much larger scale. So we got to match the size of the business with things like stationery. Writing paper? Yeah, that's it. Sydney. For a long time, Sam and I have been writing on the stationery we always use. That's just it. Right. We've got to change the headings of the stationery to match our progress. Now, here's a sample I got up. I think it's the best of the lot submitted by the printer. Here, here take a look at it. Mm, my pretty colors. That's the real thing to catch the eye of the customer. We want his business, not his eyes. How do you like that sample? I am looking at it. Pictures on it, Jack. Sure, Ma. As soon as the customer opens up that letter, he'll see that uniform printed in one corner. But knee pants. There is the knee pants. Oh, it's on there. You see, in, in the upper right-hand corner. So small, I can't read it without my glasses. Your glasses is in your pocket, I know, Becky. Yeah, no, I put them there. I'll get them uh, uh, there. Now I will look at this picture book we are going to use for writing paper and... Oi, oi. What's this? What's this? Jake, you're pale. Pale, I'm dying. Sydney, what is this? What's that, Pa? It says Hal Fink, vice president in charge of sales. Mm -hmm.